Hello, everybody! Welcome to Dragon Age Season 2 Resurgence, the vlog, Part 13, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> I am, I am um, Lucky Jack 20, as a familiar character to some, possibly more hated by others, but more by some. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're just uh, here wrapping up what just happened over the last couple hours. What a rush that was. <laughs> yeah. There was suspense, action, romance. <laughs> <laughs> the whole deal. Heart, please take the mic away from me before I embarrass myself. Uh, the, the, the floor is open for whatever it is the players. That was good. The, yeah, for whatever the players want to talk about first, the floor is open. Brought to you by Payne's Practical Products. Yeah, I was just yeah. Like, Damn it. throwing that out there. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, heck, almost, I am so glad I never forgot how much of an amazing DM you are, GM. Uh, awesome. Mark. Lucky this man. was. He's amazing. The organization and everything of how you're, how we're connecting and bridging everything. Um between now what has been years of creating stories for this universe that you know we've like it, that this universe that all of us are putting together is a collaborative thing and i love you too wild man <laughs> another ship um, <laughs> I, I think uh, you're lucky, Jack. People were asking me which of who's my who's my uh, I guess YouTube or online boyfriend, and I said I don't know. It's between Lucky Jack and or David Reclusiark. Yeah. But I feel really, like, you are. really, I, really, I, part of me would have shipped you and Riz at some point. For me and Riz, I don't, well, the, th the thing is, I don't uh, Riz. And, I, I don't think I've I've been able to confide in Riz as much as I've confided in you on a personal level. So. And then David, I have been able to as well. So I don't think Riz and I are at that level in our friendship. Yet. Okay. Whereas I've actually seen you in person twice. <laughs> right. And But I was going to say, it's either between you or David, but, but I was saying, well, I think David's sort of attached to Kevin. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I think... So I'm, I'm thinking, I think Lucky Jack's probably my online Aww. boyfriend. <laughs> so. Yay. Aww. So, um, but anyway, nothing to do with this I, last session, <laughs> except for the right, 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 right. So. I'm, I'm curious as to what Lucky Jack's highlight was of the session. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh God, there are so many though. <laughs> there were a lot. There was like, oh, I can't just narrow it down to one thing. I mean, yeah, who on do you a love personal the level, for me. Uh, uh, <laughs> it would be content. It would be best for the one. That's what I'm um, I, I really, uh, honestly, like in terms of like having some sort of resolution or having a continuation of something, at least, I'm super stoked about the fact that well, somewhat with us still. Something so Liam, about that Liam is you said, yeah, Liam. Something about that I really do like. I feel like all doesn't show on my face, but I'm super giddy about the whole like the, the prospect that there is still more to that, and that I'm so glad that there are still that there were all these loose ends from season one that can still be touched upon in season two now, and the fact that there may be involvement of me in season three. That's always cool to know you have promise in the future. Yeah, <laughs> that letter. I know. Yeah, you, you're, you're, you're I love that moment between you and Cedric because it was almost oh, like yeah. old friends were reuniting. Um, I think that there was an understanding, an unspoken understanding of friendship between Lielden and Liam. And so mm -hmm. when I first was designing the story of this campaign and I, re I decided to bring Liam's character back in a way, I was like, oh God, we have to bring Lielden back and just to see what happened. And yeah, that was... Well, I hope that didn't disappoint. Oh no, <laughs> Kevin. From the other, from the other, like end of that. How would, how did you feel with that scene? Uh, I, I I loved it, especially the end when when he said like "Welcome back" or something like that. I was like, oh, my heart is just all over the place. Gotta pick up yep. all the pieces. And, uh. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, that was, good. That was a great line. Uh, I, think you're I was just good. not okay by the end of that. That was so good. <laughs> I, was crying. I was crying so hard. I had to pull my face from camera because I was like ugly crying. Uh, ugly cry, yes. Uh, just, just take all the XP points. Just there we go. Yeah, just give them to Leo uh, this time. Yeah. <laughs> At Real Talk, I was worried because I didn't know, like, part of me didn't know if it really was Liam or not, or I didn't know what Hark had in mind. Like, I still couldn't tell yeah. if it was like. You were. I couldn't tell if it was in the dark. Something... And so I just kind of took that kind of gut response of I think it is, and so yeah, yeah, yeah. We we yeah. I, I prepped Lucky Jack for this session twice. Once a couple of months ago when we were when I met him in person, and mm -hmm. then again. And that's when I learned about week. the left hand stuff. That's when you learned yeah. about the mm -hmm. left hand stuff, and also the scar, or not the scar, the mark, Liam's mark, and and the necklace and the necklace I brought up with him as well, um, but. I I think the timing of this was perfect because I don't know if you've noticed how I DM in the sense that your characters go like this. Like, I lift your character up, then I squash him down. Then I lift your character up, then I squash him down. And and this is supposed Which to happen. Fine. Like, some, squash, some characters are on a high and other characters are on a low, and it keeps things interesting. And so we left Cedric on a very big low at the end of last session because he essentially lost his best friend. And so I thought having Lielden show up in his life in the next session is perfect because he's down here. He meets Lielden, he comes back up again, yeah. which I think is really, really timing-wise was exactly how I wanted it to, to go. Yeah. So. No. I mean, Cedric, Cedric doesn't like voice a lot of things like that. Uh, but him him like kind of giving him the nod and like a slight bow at the end of that was kind of like him saying like when he said like welcome back it, it was kind of like him saying it's good to be back with you friend Aww. that's that's what totally. i kind of wanted to do that but cedric wouldn't say that in person because so he had to show it like a physical way um it, so that's what was with the bow it's probably safe to say that if everything goes well, and then at the end of this whole adventure, you and Lielden may end up having some sort of, like, regrouping or something. Like, might yeah. have a, you know, reunion of some sort, which I think would be really cool. Yeah, it would yeah be. I, I think that Lielden interacted with the group really well this session. Yeah. Thank it, you. It didn't feel forced. It, it was very well integrated. That Which a... is a, tes a testament to both Hawk putting it together and Lucan's RPing. Oh, thank you. There, there was all your characters are such a nice variety and a lot of and I like that in this session I got to see pretty much the best and worst of everyone involved. Hey, Doug. Yeah, that's Spunk. Yeah. Hey, hi, Logan. Right there. Hey. 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 Yeah. That's but, a good point. Yeah, that you did actually see very differing degrees of all the characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I got to get a pretty good exposure to what almost all of them are like and to, and I like that. I like that I had the chance to come to grow and like them more. Aww. <laughs> even, even, even after they tried to kill me, that's, that's all of it. <laughs> even after, like, even after this whole thing is over, and I, I can definitely see Cedric and Leoden getting back together because if that date ever happens... Uh, <laughs> Are you, you chaperoning on our date? <laughs> don't mess with I'll tell you that. Chaperoning. You might be now, but... It's Andrea, okay, Andrea. You can, you, can, you, can, you can chaperone... You can chaperone Cedric and Hugh, but... <laughs> I'll do that. It'll be a, a fair thing. <laughs> I can, I, can, I can see it now, though. Nice candlelit dinner. Cedric's at the next table just staring. <laughs> Hugh's, Don't like, mess with Hugh's like, Cedric, what are you doing? <laughs> My eyes are over here, Cedric. <laughs> As he's slowly cutting into his <laughs> Did you see that? What? What? Uh... Weird. <laughs> I love that she asked him out. Yeah. 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 Was yeah. I was like, I was thinking the whole time, take it, Kimberly. This is your chance. Take <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, 
I had to wait till a good yeah. time to do it, and I was like, well, he's about to leave, I gotta do it now. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Take it by the stubby horns, yes. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Although, you know, we should we should talk about the first ship of the session, though. Kennel. Kenna. Oh, Kennel! <laughs> yeah, that, that story by Connor made me cry. It was so good. <laughs> it was like, oh my god. It was the weirdest thing, because, okay, so out of character, I saw Connor as, like, this young boy. He's sweet, he's honest, he's loyal, and he's a lot like Kenna's brother. So I was like, okay, well, she's only going to see him that way. But then when he was telling his side of the story, I was kind of looking at him, I don't know how to explain this without sounding super yeah. weird, but I was seeing it through Kenna's eyes, and he wasn't that innocent boy. She she saw him as this man who had grown with this suffering for a long time, mm-hmm. and it wasn't about him hiding in the shadows behind his brother. It was about him being weighed down by that guilt and afraid and believing himself and being afraid to step in the light and feeling like he's worthy. Like she felt his pain and his guilt and she felt his heart. And at that moment I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> she's not going to reject him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so happy. It was so good. When it was I, so good. <laughs> when I was, um, when I was designing Connor's, um, personality grown up, at least like the way he is now, um, I was, trying to make him up be a little bit more upbeat and a little quirky for a reason because I think that part of that is a mechanism for him to cope with some really tragic things that happened to his childhood I mean he had a really horrible tr- like traumatic mm-hmm. experience and I yeah. wanted to let that resurface because that stayed with him and I know that Gwinnell tried really hard to support him and try to, I guess, psychologically, like, give him therapy for that, because it's hard for him to recover from that, knowing that he was responsible for so much death for people that he loved. And I never had a chance to address that with his character, because I think he needed time to really trust the other PCs. Not that he didn't come close to trusting the other PCs, it's just there was this special bond that he started forming with Kenna specifically until finally I was like okay now I can get into what's been going on really deep in Connor's head and have him be in this very vulnerable spot where he can actually divulge to Kenna something that he's always dealt with internally and hasn't got a chance to really tell many tell many people and Mm -hmm. I felt that his mechanism of being a little bit more upbeat and a little bit more quirky is very similar to Kenna's mechanism of playing pranks like there's a lot of parallels between the two so I started I mean that was how I kind of went in the scene I didn't necessarily expect Kenna to end up accepting him in that way but at minimum I was trying to present in that scene that the two of them are really not that different there's a Mm -hmm. lot they have a lot of very shared experiences and whether she saw that as something that is more sibling related or even more than that was up to her and I was pleasantly shocked when she actually accepted the kiss. I expected <laughs> yeah. that she would pull away and I was going to go through this whole thing where Connor has to deal with the rejection and it, that didn't happen. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah it's just she saw so much of herself mm. in his pain and it's just she didn't see that, that like, oh, he's like my brother. She's like, no, he's like me. Yeah. And it was really... That's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's what... I, I, I try to do that really hard when I when I design my NPCs is is I... I like when I listen to you guys role play because I start picking up little nuances in your characters' stories so that I can pull out similarities and relations with your characters with the NPCs. And I don't know if you've noticed that, but I try to do that a lot and finding common ground. How does Violetta relate with this person? How does Connor relate with this PC? How does Hugh relate with this PC? And I think that helps a lot with forming these bonds with these characters. It's a really good job. Thank you. Yeah. It's a really good job. And we went from there to to Whitehall. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. That was really hard. <sighs> I didn't think it was going to be that hard. Hmm. It was, that was... <laughs> Were you there wanna... for session one? <laughs> yeah. I, I want to say that I can... Like, I only really, like, get emotional like that when I feel like that same emotion coming off of everyone else. Mm -hmm. That was really a... That was really a powerful moment in the session. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm curious about the hair. I didn't forget about it. Yes. (laughs) Thoughts on on the piece of cloth and thoughts on the hair. I think it was... I mean, I think it was one of her brothers. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I mean, I always forget which one's the mage. Mm. Eric. What? Eric, Eric is the mage. Eric is the mage. Oh, yes. I, feel like, Ari, I feel like it's probably him, right? Ari is the. It was mage's robes. It was mage robes. Yeah. Yeah. So Burgundy mage robes. Mage robes. Mm. And the hair was dark. I think mm-hmm. both of your brothers have dark hair. I think. Yes, mm. they do. So that will be interesting for later. What do you plan on doing with the hair? Um, I'm going to take it to Violetta and see. Well, Mm -hmm. I don't know if she can identify, like, who it came from, but she's going to try and figure it out. (laughs) If anything, one idea, and I didn't know if it would work or not, because I don't think that's how bears work. I was thinking, like, I was wondering if, like, something where, like, you could have Spewon, like, I don't know, sniff it, track it kind of thing? I don't know. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, you that would have been a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Esbjorn and sniff it and see if he recognizes yeah. it. Esbjorn would know the scent if it was her brother's, right? Yeah, he so. would. Oh, that's, that's a good a idea. Cool. Bear. Might be a nice <laughs> thing to do in next session. So. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Logan. Thank you, Logan. <laughs> Thank you, Logan. Just Thank me you. misunderstanding how animals work sometimes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yay. But, um... But yeah, that was a very touching moment to see that and again be reminded of what the blight did. Yeah. Yeah. I was super worried you were gonna spill the beans. I was like, oh yeah. man, this is not the I time. Was, <laughs> did not want I did not want Theo to know that you had that decision to make. That would not yeah. have gone well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll be, it'll be hard yeah yeah if we ever find that out that'll be hard on all of us i think yeah. <laughs> I, i'm scared i'm most scared for theo and kenna like just the way that they'd react to that <laughs> mm. but then but then we had the i'm not sure if you would call it a trail or not since it wasn't really by an act of will yeah that was pretty crazy yeah, that, that was, that was her that. curse doing all that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that was her curse. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Andrea checked it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was that that roll I did. I was trying to see where the demon was, and there's something going on with her necklace. And yeah, that's part of the reason I need to talk to you next time because we kind of we kind of <laughs> ran out of time on it. But I kind of. So given that, I, I, do there would be have... several conversations. Mm-hmm. Given that, do you have some guesses now um, at what this curse is doing? <laughs> it's certainly... still like there, there's still so many itty bitty parts to it. Mm-hmm. It certainly is heating things up. <laughs> it is heating things up. It is also taking away her will. <laughs> Uh, I, feel, I feel like all the pieces probably will obviously fit very well in Hawk's head, but just so you know, Hawk, all of this is just like scattered little pieces. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no idea. Yeah, there's I no link to the dots it. yet. Yeah. No. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm still session. working on that part. Hopefully, next session. Yes. Yes. But no, this this ends up uh, again calling back to before we all really got into these sessions. Um, one of Hark's questions was where, what what kind of journey are you interested in your character having? And my answer was, I don't know, just put her in a place where she questions her faith and maybe she will or won't even get out of it. Oh, Good job. <laughs> <laughs> She's so there. <laughs> Good. I'm Thanks. so happy to hear that. Uh-huh. Um, so I think then the second shipping 
of the session <laughs> took place. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't expect that one to happen. I expected that one to, yeah. to stretch out a little longer. <laughs> yeah. But, I, yeah. Just because really? at the end of last session, you know, Theo gave a fan letter to Andrea and, and, yeah. and Hallie didn't know how to feel about that. So she was going to... Oh, uh, was she jealous? Mm. <laughs> That's oh. kind of cute. Just <laughs> Um, so yeah, she, she was going to have a word with Theo about that, and then she oh. lost her will and attacked her friends and her family, and had a little meltdown, so, a yeah, that, that, that so, was there and happening right now. So me getting a bit personal as a player, um, something that I haven't really said, but something that's been worrying me, I don't get as emotional as the rest of this group uh, at scenes. <laughs> I don't tend to be as teary, I don't tend to be as... <gasps> Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not pointing at any particular Sam. Um, you, <laughs> <Sorry. know. laughs> you know, I, I, you know, like last session we were all in person with the Cedric and Hugh. I kept it together the best, and I've been thinking to myself, what is wrong with me? Why am am I not invested enough in Theo? Is Theo That's not? Am I not as no. into Theo? But then this session, second yeah. Hallie disappeared. Something just kicked in, and I knew like. Theo's priority was to protect Hallie. He tried to knock her out. He tried to do all these non-lethal stuff. And I I knew he wanted to go in the pit, and I know he wanted to talk to Hallie. And it's like he just took over, and I actually got emotional, which was so great for me as a player to, to reaffirm that connection to my character. Um, sure. So that was really great for me. Yeah, yeah, you, you did amazingly. Awesome. I loved it so much. Ugh. The whole moment was so tense. I mean, Emotion, ugh, yeah. ugh, there's so much going on. Did did you guys think that Cedric was actually because this was I did you guys think Cedric was actually going to kill Hallie in that instant? Well when he goes, oh, it is my duty. And oh. she told him to. Like it right. Yeah. I, just I was like, like hey, if I was Cedric and I thought she was a demon, I might do it. Yeah. Like if, if I was Cedric, I would have done it. So <laughs> I wasn't convinced that he would, but I Out of care. I kinda Out hoped he would just to see where he would go. Go ahead, Lion Jack. Yeah. Out of care out of character I totally like i was on the fence about it because again i know the whole because because i've been through that whole thing yeah. before with mm -hmm. people turning against other people and wanting to kill in order to say purify or mm -hmm. or Pretty enact one of, one's own morality but this was a sort of a difference thing where in that instance that was for, if, I, if i'm remembering correctly it's been again months but if i remember correctly that was more of an instance of Maximilian did want to attack and kill Delwyn, but Delwyn almost had a sense of apathy in that it, it, I didn't get the feel. It wasn't like um, he wasn't exactly fighting it. I don't think <laughs> Delwyn wanted to die, but he definitely did not seem to care about resisting any longer. Yeah. But in this situation, this was completely different because now this was Hallie outright begging and pleading to be mm -hmm. killed. Yeah. And yeah. that's what kind of pushed me like on this fence of I don't know what exactly Cedric was going to do mm -hmm. until he outright until he told us out of character that, that he was not actually intending to. Yeah. 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 Like Kelly like... said, she went to Cedric because she knew out of all of them he was the only one who had a chance of mm -hmm. just like going for it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you're saying was, like, oh. Thanks for not killing me, though. We very much appreciate it. Yeah, it felt uh, really weird to be on the side of not player killing, and you know yeah. everyone else was on the side of doing it. That was really weird for me. <laughs> Kevin, go ahead. It was it was a struggle for Cedric. Like I said, uh, mm -hmm. when it was in session, he was like, he his his hands were shaking and his arms were shaking because I mean, yeah, he's been in fights before. He's He's gotten bloody and stuff, but this was someone who was very close to him. And even though I said out of character in the warm up that she, he was who I trusted less, least, it mm -hmm. still doesn't mean that she wasn't a friend to him. Sure. And um, it it would have been like a very split decision to at the very end to not kill her, mm -hmm. just. 
because of like their relationship and he kind of had that mentality of like i kind of want to like save you more than like um he he had like a lapse of faith because he knew that it was his duty to just end it yep based yeah. off of like what he was perceiving he he saw that she was doing a lot of damage to his friends and her friends and it was just like all right i his job is to just end it but yeah something got in there and i i also kind of wanted to like hark back to the part where it's like um liam had a choice about killing delwyn's uh father or right yeah Delwyn or grail delwyn's I, dad delwyn's dad father. where like he had that choice to do to do something yeah like i know you brought that up before but i felt like that was another point where it was like it could have gone either way yeah and um at the very end uh or like at the last moment as lucky jack saw or Leildon saw that he decided not to do it. Yeah. Um, that was um, also saying real quick, just to, uh, just to touch on something that happened before that. That was this was also another big session for me because I want to say this was, it, you know, not not counting the not counting the climax to um, see, to season one, but this was the first time that I have ever had to fight another PC. That wasn't just another enemy controlled by Hark. That this was the first time I've ever actually fought another player mm -hmm. as part of it. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> and she gave you a run for your money too. Yeah, yeah. Hallie hurt. Was, Hallie hurt a lot. I didn't think yeah. we were gonna make it. I was like, she's gonna kill us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she knocked out. Nervous she, about that. she killed Kenna. <laughs> she did. Yeah, well, technically. I did that. I did that. She killed Kenna. Mm. Oh man. Only for a second, yeah. though. I got you. I got you. <laughs> yes, and thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah. I don't know. When you kept saying you were, like, holding on to Kenna's arm, I was like, I'm glaring at you. I, I, I didn't want you touching her in that moment. I was just like, get away from her, because I don't know yeah. if you still have a demon on you. <laughs> well, <laughs> technically, you're right. They just... No, but, um, and then... The light show happened. That that happened. Oh, yeah, that was pretty great. Yeah, that was an amazing. I love that so much. Yes, it's so. Go ahead. We, we each have a god. Uh, mine was hack on. What would what did you guys have? A lady. I wrote it down. Somewhere. So so when it comes to when it comes to um, these campaigns, and when you have campaigns that have so many different religious sects you know the Andrastian versus avar religion versus the elven religion versus the, the dwarven you know belief in the stone i was trying to present it in such a way that i did not confirm nor deny the existence of any of the religious sects so it was trying to interpret that vision that you had to be this is what the avar believed for some of you the creator is the maker for some of you, the creator are the creators, if you're elven. For some of you, everything came from the stone. So I was trying really hard to make it, at the end, non-denominational, because I did not want to confirm the Andrastians are right, or the dwarves are right. Of course. So they just kept saying creation, and that was the main thing. The fact that they gave names to their gods, you can interpret that however you want. And which kind of makes sense when he started talking about how, regardless if you're child of the stone, child of the gray, child of the, fo child of the forest, you're all children of creation. And your purpose is to maintain that balance when all of you were created, wherever that source may have come from, or however, whatever name you want to give that source. Um, the other thing that was thought was really cool, and this was when Hannah was talking about Theoban calming Halisair down, is that I wrote all of the descriptions of your characters, like the elemental descriptions, and I love how the role that Theoban made to calm Halisair down when I read things like grounded, a source of support and stability. Yep. I'm like, that is Theoban. Like, yep. So. Yeah. 
Whereas I, it, it's hard to feel that way when sometimes, like, I had, like, Theo was, like, kind of screamed at the party. But, I mean, he did it because he... Because he didn't believe that they were going about things the right way. And ultimately, he believed that life deserved deserved a chance before death. Yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. This is brooding before the storm. Who could that be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There were a lot of good. They, they were great. I love the description. They wrote them all down. Yeah. <laughs> I can, oh I, I, I can give you a copy because I like them a lot. Um, yeah, so good. The um, story that the that yourselves gave you is, um, if you recognize that story, it's from Dragon Age Inquisition Trespasser. Hmm. Um, because according to the spoilers, guys, according yeah. to Solus, the Fade originally was part of the world. Right. And Solus did something to separate the Fade from the rest of the world into the Fade using a veil. Mm -hmm. So that so is... the original Pentavia Guardians failed to stop Solus. Yes. Some unknown force. Maybe it was Solus, maybe it was something else. But some unknown <laughs> force, as I said, disrupted the original yeah. creation, which included what we call it the Fade. And now the mm -hmm. fade is separated, and yeah. that is where soul comes from, which is that underlying theme again. Um. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited by this! I'm excited oh. by our new abilities too. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, the archon. Yeah, they're so cool. Yeah. Please, please tell me the stone archon looks nothing like a golem. Just that's very important to me. Oh, no. geez, that would be. Good. It basically yeah. looks like it looks like Theoben with but with stone stone skin. Okay. That's good. That was one of the worries I had if I had some kind of stony ability like that, or if Kenna wanted to use it or anything. Like Theo would never use it if it looked like a golem. No, no. It's just sure. you with stone skin. Yes. Okay. Yeah, those abilities that was pretty cool. Uh, I can't see how we implement how how did the session go compared to what you were expecting, Hark? Were there any surprises? Well, besides <laughs> besides the Kenor oh, ship and Kenor. the Theo Theosair Halioben Theo. ship. Halioben. <laughs> okay. Halioben hole. I wasn't sure. I mean, I I wasn't sure what you guys were gonna do at White Veil Hold. Um, I wasn't sure how the whole Cedric and Lielden thing was going to play out. Um, I also wasn't sure how Lielden would handle the owl. The poor, poor acorn. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for not killing my bird. <laughs> I, never, I, never, I never was a good shot at fellows, honestly. <laughs> Maybe since season one, I never was good with them. I always just use swords. Yeah, I remember that actually. Like the um, circle of mage, I think it was the only shot you made was the killing blow. <laughs> right. Every single time, I was like, ah. So, yeah. Fortunately, have not improved. So. Um, yeah, I, I think I think I mean there were major major things I didn't expect. So. No, that's part of the fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, was not. Expecting to get asked out <laughs> in a video. <laughs> uh, Whereas we were all expecting it because Kim was yeah. asking on about this since yeah. she made Andrea. I mean, I'll admit, I'll admit, okay, Andrea. I mean, I'll admit part of me, like, after I learned that she apparently, like, I, I don't want to say idolized because that kind of makes it seem like there's, like, after I'd heard that she had looked up to him so much, honestly, part of me was kind of anticipating slash hoping that something like that would happen before Aww. the session was over. Because I, I wanted to at least, because I wanted to address that and not just have it be like something just kind of like went on by while I'm here with the session now. Um, there, there, I think the general public tends to like you as the left hand of the vine, but there is still a vast number of people who are uneased by the fact that a Kunari, regardless of whether you actually are a Kunari or not, right. they're still amused by that. So. 
so. Right. Well, now we have Leal Dra Drea. Leal Drea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Andrielden. Andrielden. Oh. Andrielden, eh? Andrielden. I like that. Andrielden. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think I think Leal Drea's gonna have whatever. to. Whatever. She was so awkward. <laughs> Logan's gonna have to contact David and be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I may have cheated on you. I may have cheated on you today. <laughs> or Lielden might have cheated on Max cheated on Maximilian. <laughs> but so yeah. Um I guess I'm not sure if it's the place to ask the question or not, but so I'm assuming it's possibly being a plan to try and start having cameo slash appearances of the other three. In coming sessions, or uh, well, they already did Gwinnell, and okay. they already did King Kind. Andrew was with us last time. Yes, nice. Um, That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can. There's a very good possibility of others. Is all I'll say. Very good possibility of more than that. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I I've been yeah. very bluntly messaging David like, so when are you joining us? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, now I'm gonna have to tell him like you gotta get on this dude. <laughs> you might get asked. You might. I know yeah, you're married, I, I... but you might get asked out anyway. <laughs> dude, dude, this, yeah. dude, 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 this scene is hot. You gotta go there now. <laughs> for the feels train, this is the group for you. <laughs> yes. Um. But yeah. Anything else from the session? No. Uh, Great session. Awesome. Yeah, it's so it's so fun to play with you two though again. Yeah. yeah, this is so much so fun much to play with you guys too. Yeah, really enjoyed it. I hope there's more. <laughs> totally. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask Maximilian now. I'm gonna be like, so did Leal didn't ask about me? <laughs> <laughs> Logan, what was your um, what were your expectations going into this? Just out of curiosity. Um, I was wanting to see more of a continuation of Leal's story. Of course, get to maybe piece together some of the puzzles, you know, try and piece together whether through whatever came off the top of my head or whatever you provided to try and piece together more of what, what has been happening since season one. Um, but overall, it was just, I, I don't know what my expectations were. I didn't really have like, I didn't really want to like go into this assuming anything because I know it's a session that you're hosting. I can never really expect what's going to happen in one. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the one thing that I wish I could have been able to introduce in the session, but there wasn't any way that I thought would make sense, is that I mm -hmm. wanted to somehow tie Bellum the Blade in. Mm. But there really wasn't. Because if you remember, yeah. your, the Mabaria War Warhound used to belong to Bellum. Right. Okay. And the the players actually indirectly encountered Bellim through another Grey Warden. Halasair, mm. if you did not know, wielded the axe herself. Wielded Bellum the Blade's axe. It's now referred to as Bellum the Blade. The axe. Is. Fortunately, not in this fight we just had. Fortunately, fortunately oh god, god. <laughs> oh, that yeah, died. killed everyone. <laughs> So it would have been, I, I would have wanted to have had some mention of Bellum, that, but there just wasn't a natural way that it would have made sense yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, right. That would be cool. So. Oops. Alrighty. Um, um, I'm possibly maybe out of time just okay. a little bit here, so. Well, thank you so much, Lucky Jack. Yeah, thank you all so much. This was you. awesome. Great. You're amazing. Yeah. Yeah, you guys were yeah. awesome, too. This was sad. Yeah, I really guess. loved it. I hope that you guys have fun with the rest of the season, whether or not I appear in the future again or elsewhere. So, wow. all right. Very well. All righty. Bye. 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 Bye, -bye everybody. Bye. Oh, okay. He's so great. <laughs> I love, he's such Very a sweetheart. Sweet. Cool guy. Super sweetheart.